Actually, I live close to Saint Sauveur. It's a little community about an hour north from Montreal. And I like to go there by myself sometimes and read the, the, the sports newspaper. It's called the Carole à Gogo. And not, it's not a strip joint, okay? It's just called the Carole à Gogo. And the owner happens to be Carole. So one day I sat there for a couple of months ago, and she said, Hey, Patrick, this is Dennis. He's a friend of mine. Uh, you live on the same lake. Maybe you'd like to introduce each other. And I started to speak with Dennis, tall man, very muscular, white hair. And he, we, we became friends very quickly. And, and Dennis told me about water sports. We both like boating and, uh, and wakeboarding and water ski. And he told me about real estate. He loved so much real estate. And I happen to love real estate too. So we had this great conversation. After 45 minutes, Dennis ordered his second bottle of wine. And I to my guess, the conversation got funnier and funnier. <laughs> and I said, Dennis, I mean, we've been talking for almost an hour together. I don't even know what you do for a living. What do you do for a living? He said, oh, Patrick, <laughs> it's not really important. I said, what do you mean? I'd like to know you better. What do you do for a living? He said, Patrick, okay, I'll tell you. I've been working for 22 years for Ido Quebec. I said, 22 years? My gosh, you look young. He said, I was 22 when I started. I'm 44 right now. Oh, my God, if you don't mind, Dennis... Can I ask you a personal question? He said, yes. Well, do you like your job, Dennis? <sighs> then he breathed deeply. He took a big zip of his wine. Ooh, ooh. He said, well, Patrick, I don't really like my job. In fact, I'm sick almost every morning when I got to go to work. And I said, my God, Dennis, why don't you quit? Why don't you leave then? He said, I can't. Come on, you can, Dennis. You can do whatever you want. No, you don't understand. I can't. It's impossible. Dennis, you told me earlier that you like real estate. Why don't you work in that field? He said, you don't understand. I can't. I've got still eight years to go and two months before my pension. Hmm. Do you know a lot of people like Dennis? Do you know a lot of Dennis and Denises in your own life? Maybe you were like that before. I remember Jack Canfield, he says that the winners in the game of life are living their passion instead of waiting for their pension. I love that quote so much from Jack. A lot of people are like that. They're putting X's to their calendar, waiting like prisoner to get out of their job because they don't like their job. And you know what they use those people? Because they have this big void inside of them. They use what I call motivational substitute. You know about that. For some people, it's drug. For some people, it's alcohol. That was Dennis' case. Cycle bottom of wine after 45 minutes. For some people, it's sex. Some people, it's television. Or some people, it's food. And they try to fill up that big void they have inside of them. But guess what? They wake up the next day, and they still have that void. And sometimes a big headache that goes along with it. But I want to talk to you about my first English presentation. This, I really went into out of my comfort zone. Because still, today, 80% of what I do is in French. So I don't get to speak in English that much. So a woman called me up from New Brunswick. She said, Patrick, I would like you to speak to our conference. I said, what about the conference? She said, 300 nurses. I said, I'll be there. <laughs> and before she hung up the phone, she said, Patrick, by the way, uh, the, your presentation will be in English. No problem. I said, no problem, ma'am. I hang up the phone and I said, you stupid frog. <laughs> You're not that good in English. You're going to ridicule yourself in front of all those women? Then I thought about calling her back, but I said, God, you've got to stretch out. You've got to go out of your comfort zone. So, so I prepared for that speech. I could not speak the night before. I was in my hotel room in New Brunswick with my English and French dictionary going through my, my speech, and I was like, there, something I used to say, say, going through life without goals is like having a boat without a rudder. But rudder, 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 I was, had difficulty with my pronunciation. So I went down with the bellman and I said, please, could you help me out? How do you pronounce that word? And I was going back to my room and I was going down and I did that several times. And I gave my presentation the next morning. I didn't, go, I didn't do that well, but people were so kind. They were helping me out. I told you earlier about authenticity. That's what you need to be if you want to succeed. But you got to stretch out, go out of your comfort zone, take action, try things that you've never tried before. What are you going to try when you go out of this session? If you were to die tomorrow, what would die with you? If you were to die tomorrow, what would die with you? What is that one thing that you always wanted to do but you never took any action doing it? Whether it's to go to Rome, whether it's to write that book, whether it's to ask your wife to marry you, your, your spouse to marry you, whether it's to have a children, it doesn't matter, it's different from one person to another. 
I hope today I've ignited the fire inside of you so you will commit and take action on this one thing that is very special to you. I'll leave with that quote. I learned from Charles yesterday that that quote is from Michelangelo, one of my favorite quotes. He said simply that the biggest tragedy in life is not so much that people have high goals and don't achieve them. The biggest tragedy in life is that people have such low goals. They achieve them and they're satisfied with it. I hope it will never be your case. Thank you very much for having me today. Merci.